Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are walking around the garden for a little tour just to show you how things are looking at the beginning of August. Uh, we just are kind of coming off of a really hot time of the year uh, where it was over 100 degrees for several days, less than most years honestly, so it's not been too bad, uh, but you'll be able to see, you know, some things that look really good that are coming into their peak. <laughs> Poor Aaron Douglas is just like rubbing all over his legs right now. It's totally distracting me. He loves you, Aaron. He really does. He loves Aaron. <laughs> so cute. Anyway, so you'll get to see some things that are at peak and you'll get to see some things that are stressed. And I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time in every single area going through all the details because there's a lot to look at. I just want to give you a general idea of what it looks like beginning of August. So clearly this is our biggest, uh, most amazing thing that we've done this season. Uh, I say we, a huge team of people came in. You guys probably saw the videos, or I'm hoping you did, where they came together and put together this amazing aquascape ecosystem pond. And I have just, well, me and everybody else. Everybody's been asking what Aaron's thoughts are on this. And if I was pointing the camera at him right now, he would tell you how much he loves it as well. It's just been a kind of a game changer for our garden space and for our family. Uh, we spend a lot of time out here. It's been fun to take a little bit more of a naturalistic approach to planting too. You know, like tucking things in around boulders, which you guys know I'm not used to. And I've always been a little bit opposed to creating I don't know. I think it's because maybe I have seen it done in a way that I don't like it. It doesn't look natural when some people put in berms with boulders, <laughs> but this works. And I honestly, I love it. And it makes me want to put berms in and boulders in all over the place. Now, I don't know if we actually will do that, but it makes me want to do that because I love it so much. Um, so we have, after everybody left, I've come out here and done a little bit of planting and I've got a few more things I want to tuck in this area, but overall, um, just loving it so, so much. Now we are waiting for pavers to arrive. We have ordered some that match all the others that are in our, you know, walkways and we will be putting a paver patio down and it'll be like a legit patio. We're not just putting it on top of mulch like the other walkways. We'll dig this out and have a proper base put in and have the paver sand because people, you know, this will be a trafficked area and we want it to be really comfortable and also for chairs, which don't buy cheap Amazon <laughs> Adirondack chairs. Uh, this one's perfect for the kids, but we are ordering some more beefy ones to go in this area, but it gives you kind of a, an idea of what look we're going for. But anyway, this paver stones will go all the way out over these concrete blocks right here, and it'll give it a little bit more of a kind of complete look, and then we'll have walkways throughout. We are dealing with a little bit of algae, I say a little bit, it's a lot of bit of algae, which you can actually see better in the sun. We were blessed with an overcast day today, so we thought it'd be a great day to come out here and do this. Uh, but they said, when they put it in, they said you have full sun, you don't have any shade over here, and it's super hot. You will have algae, uh, and it's gonna take a little while for it to balance itself. Now this is a chemical-free pond, and I'm still learning how all that works, so I'll be able to uh, share that whole process with you guys as I learn, um, but it will work itself out. They've got like an auto doser that releases bacteria and there's an ion something. Do you even know? <laughs> I don't know all the proper stuff. I need to talk to Greg, but um, anyway, I'm looking forward to just watching this evolve. So we will have a pathway through this area. I could just spend the whole day right here. Should we? <laughs> I love the plants here. We did run a hose in into the pond just to top it up. I probably should have put that away. It's gonna happen when it's 100 plus degrees. Uh, but I just love all the evergreens in this area and the more, I mean, there's some groupings of plants, but it's just a little bit more haphazard, less formal. Love it. The pathway will come right here. I don't know if you can tell the little difference here, but the berm goes up this way and the pathway will come out and we'll meet, like you'll be looking straight at the pathway leading up to the Hartley at this point. But I did come out and plant a couple more evergreens and just so much fun. Let's head back to the Bordeaux behind the Hartley because it's looking amazing right now. Uh, there were some tent caterpillars in our crab apple, one of the crab apples. In fact, Franco, who was here helping with the pond project, he's like, hey, you got tent cat caterpillars in your crab apple? Never had those before. So I came and I sprayed them with BT and I think it took care of the problem, which is great. But look at the Bordeaux in here. They looked so sad when I planted them. They were these stringy, long, kind of sick looking plants. I did not cut them back because at the time I planted them for you guys in a video, I wanted them to still have some color on them. 
and we just started in with the weekly fertilizer schedule. They're sprayed with BT once a week to keep budworms at bay and they have just filled in so beautifully. I just love, love these. Now a little update on the Silene. I posted a picture of these when they were absolutely gorgeous. I started Silene, it's um, Sib Sibella Car Carmine Silene. I think it's the variety name. And it was easy to start from seed. It grew beautifully and then it bloomed this massive amount of bright pink blooms. And then all of those blooms turned into seed heads, which are like dry papery kind of seed heads. And it didn't look like it was fixing to push new growth. And they all kind of like fizzled out and dried up looking. So I pulled all of those, but these right here, now this is such a good learning experience for me. These were slow to take off. They're the Joey's lamb's tail started did I just say I started these from seed as well and I would love it if this whole urn was just filled just with this because these are so interesting looking so unique and so easy to take care of so anyway that is definitely something I will repeat oh so this could be part of the problem right here too I thought that this one was staying too wet <laughs> maybe that's the case but then it was drying out and I actually stuck my finger down in there made sure that the hole wasn't plugged I think with all of our concrete containers it seems like the drain holes are not very big on most of them and I mean you don't want it to be enormous because you don't want soil to be falling out um, but I feel like there there's a room for more drainage holes so I think we're going to do multiple drainage holes for our containers this one will be a little bit hard because it's an urn and you've got kind of a small base so we'll just probably drill this one out a little bit larger so we make sure to have really good drainage. I meant to do this yesterday. Kangaroo paws in this container. These have been awesome. I mean, just swing around this way and look at how beautiful these containers are. So the Super Bina, this is, um, is it Violet Ice. And we've got Super Trinia Royal Velvet and the Meteor Shower Verbena. And in most of these pots, the Meteor Shower has been okay. Uh, but in a, a, several of our other containers, they've kind of like dried up and so I don't know, like we lost a couple in a couple of these containers, but overall looking really good. Um, in fact, it was so fun. My mom was over here the other day and she was like, I love all this purple. I'm going to do this next year. I'm going to do purple everywhere. And it's truly like when you live in a high desert climate where it's so hot and we usually don't have cloud cover, everything kind of has an orange dry appearance by this time of year but when you've got all of these cool tones it just visually brings the temperature down and it looks really pretty i think i really have been enjoying it our artichokes haven't put on much growth but they're a really pretty texture in here that's actually what i hoped for them they do get big um so if i was to have planted these earlier in the season like they would be they would be hitting the top of these lids. So I kind of knew since I was so late, I could pop them in here, just enjoy the texture and then call it good with that. Now this is interesting right here, really good comparison. So when we did the college project, we had a whole bunch of annuals, you know, and then we always have leftovers because I tried to overplan at this point because the first year I didn't and we didn't have quite enough. So uh, when we were down there, we had people were just taking tags out of plants or out of pots because it's a lot easier to plant them when you don't have to manage the tags as well. So I had plain the blue salvia and I also had unplugged so blue. Hard to tell the difference when they're in their cans and they're really little. So when I got ready to plant these, I thought, okay, what do I have enough of that matches and uh, that I could plant in these spaces? And I thought it was all unplugged so blue, but apparently a couple of the plain the blues made it in there. And these are so much better. <laughs> I mean, I know sometimes you want a smaller growing salvia, but look at the difference here too, though. They get the exact same water, exact same sun, exact same fertilizer. Look at the difference with the leaf color, how healthy these look, how robust, and kind of how puny these look. That's not always the case. I've had Unplugged So Blue do phenomenally well in other containers, so it might just be the area, but I thought that was a very interesting comparison right there. Okay, you guys, this area up here, first of all, I have been really enjoying the Julia Child Standard Rose right here. They've just been full of color all season. They're a beautiful structure right here. I was walking by them last night and I was like saying a little prayer, like, please, 
both of you survived the winter because if I lose one of you, I'm never gonna find a tree rose that looks like this to replace it with. This is the like this is the first year, you guys. Like we planted them this year, and I have never seen a tree rose that large available for sale. Um, so I've just been really enjoying these. And this area, you know, uh, is buttoning up a little bit more. Uh, we went ahead and planted this circle area just in an effort to have something pretty in here. Uh, we are going to be putting some sort of water water feature, but I haven't decided what one yet. I don't really want to do anything huge. I don't think that that would fit this space. I think something like that tops out about where this is would be nice. Something low, but with a wide basin so you can still see the view around. But I've been enjoying this too. And if I don't find the right fountain, you know, that I think will fit this area, we'll just continue to plant it up with different things every year. Um, we've got the King Tut grass right here and then a menagerie of different coleus. We've got the Wicked Witch right here. We've got Golden Dreams and we've got Lime Time, which actually looks like it needs some iron. Uh, it usually doesn't have the veining like that. But the interesting thing about these, obviously they're all on the same water. They get the same light. Golden Dreams, I don't know if it's because it's got so much a more of a broad leaf but that one always wilts the other two do not wilt and they're all in a drip system so we have to come along and not on a day like today but on normal days where the sun's out we have to supplementally water just the golden dreams coleus there's also some surefire rose begonia and some coconut nemesia now the golden dreams just kind of going back to that is every bit worth the supplemental water because it's so beautiful i love it it's one of my favorite colors of coleus right there uh, so you will notice back here, we are, you know, doing a boxwood hedge around this whole brick patio area. And there is, you know, this raised bed, which was here when we moved in. Who knows how long it's been here because this golden rain tree is just glorious. And I didn't want to, I wanted to make this uh, area level for our boxwood hedge, but I didn't want to cut too far into this bed because I didn't know what kind of root system we were going to be dealing with. I did not want to compromise this tree in any way. So Pedro and his crew, they came along and I just asked them to use our flagstones that we've been using everywhere and just turn them on end because this is not an area where we're walking. We're also not watering a tremendous amount in here. So it doesn't need to be like legitimately like a, a wall that can handle that. And it's kind of going to be a wall that's hidden in the end, honestly, because our boxwood hedge will come up and nobody will be, you know, going over these boxwoods into this bed. So it worked out perfectly. They ran into one root, but they didn't damage it. Um, they just, I told them, I can't remember which boxwood. It might be one of these two. I just told them, cut those boxwood roots, the boxwood roots, and mold it around the root of this tree. We might lose the boxwood, but I would rather lose a boxwood than hurt the tree. Um, also right over here, and I just showed this in a video here a couple of days ago, but we had a little gate installed and this one matches the one uh, by our fireplace, which we can go look at here in a minute. Uh, there's a metal fabricator. Is that what you call them? I, I think so. We took the gate down, the one we have, and they just copied it and it looks so beautiful. And the reason why we did this is because this entryway is a little bit long. It can feel a little awkward until we've got it planted up and it kind of like draws you this way because we've done nothing on this side. Um, this is going to be our formal entry. This is where we usually park all, our, all of our cars. So you come in, we're, we go this way most of the time, but to get to this area that we had a hard time figuring out how to marry the two and keep this kind of like separate in its own room. So we figured this was the best way and it really hasn't been an issue, but it's nice to have a little side gate just in case, just in case you want to get through. So what we're going to do out here is carve out a flower bed. So we'll scrape the gravel back. We're going to have a flower bed that doesn't come out a tremendous amount, but like this far or so, and it's going to come out and meet this one. And we'll do the stack stone walls like we've done around the kitchen area. And then we'll have a few large pavers, like maybe three or four, kind of going through the flower bed to this gate right here. So in the end, this will not feel so perched. It'll feel a little bit more tucked into a flower bed with beautiful things. Uh, but I think there's something magical about gates in a garden. You just kind of like want to go through them. So we've also got some large containers on order. I don't think they'll be here until like November or so, but there'll be a large concrete container that match the Hartley ones, but they're one step up in size. And there'll be one on every corner, which will bring some cohesion and some weight to this area. 
And then eventually we're gonna probably sprinkle some more chairs around here, uh, maybe a couple umbrellas so it's real comfortable to sit in. I'm real happy with how it's coming along though. Let's head down this way because these incredible hydrangeas are looking so good. I think this is the best year ever for these. Uh-oh, hold on, might have a cat fight. So these are looking awesome. Usually during our season, and I, I thought that this year would probably be worse because our locust tree, you know, we're struggling with that one. It's looking better than it did. So I think hopefully we will recuperate it. Um, but usually th when these are white, the blooms are white, they somehow they, they burn and they turn like we have a lot of little brown petals and then they just kind of look crummy for the rest of the season. This year they were glorious, bright white, no burning. I mean, I wonder if they just, it was their year to finally be established because they just were gorgeous and they still are gorgeous. There's no sign of stress. They just look amazing. Over here, we've tucked in a lot of fun little annuals, the double up pink begonias. I need to get in like stuff like this. I need to cut the bleeding hearts back. Um, that will improve the look of this little corner dr dramatically, really. Uh, but it's gonna be a lot of that over the next week. I wanna go through and clean stuff up and it just happens this time of year things are weary spring stuff is like okay I'm done I'm done let me let me go to sleep until next year so we'll be focusing on that um, in this area here I love the annual combination oh my word this is my favorite ever and I swear the this is the tallest these anemones have ever been like why <laughs> I think they're taller than I am it's crazy I mean usually they're like about this tall or so but right like I'm not remembering this wrong, right? I feel like they're just, maybe they're getting more sun and they like it, but they're so beautiful. And there are some lemony lace uh, elderberries that I tucked in this spring. They're still going for it. This fall, when I go in to clean out things, I will probably pull some of the anemones away from the shrubs so that they have some room to breathe. Um, but I've loved this combo right here. Bordeaux is looking a little like, a little weary, not, not too bad, but there's some budworm damage. So even spring BT, it's really hard, especially when you've got them thickly planted to stay 100% on top of it. But um, Paul goes around every week and sprays them, has done a, an amazing job. I mean, they look really good. If we didn't spray them weekly, we'd have zero flowers on these. Um, these are the new look Dusty Miller. Started these from seed and have really enjoyed watching them grow. Have also loved, there's a lot of this poor locust trees just raining down dried leaves, but. I love the combination of the icicles helichrysum, same color, but different texture than the new look. That's been really nice. And then I started these, uh, these are white swan marigolds from seed as well. I thought they were gonna be white. So I thought like white, icy blue and purple, that's gonna be so pretty, but they are a pale yellow. I like pale yellow though. So they're really a beautiful thing. Uh, I have not deadheaded them at all. And I think them not being white. You know, white flowers, you feel like you have to deadhead because there's a really stark contrast between the fresh flowers and spent blooms, but it's softened when you've got a little bit of color. So I don't feel like I need to get in there and get them deadheaded at all. I've been really enjoying just these peaceful combinations. This is the, I think I even have a tag still left on this. Uh, this is the Blue Enchantress, Enchantress Hydrangea. Total water babies, but so pretty. I mean, they're still throwing out new blooms that are blue still, even though I've not done any treatment, you know, acidic treatment or any of that. And then the older blooms uh, fade out, which I could trim those off, but I enjoy that green color as well. And we've liked having our table and chairs out here. It's nice to have table and chairs near the kitchen uh, because we find that we'll actually like, want, well, more when it gets a little cooler, but we actually come out here and the kids like, we do popsicle time where they come outside and eat their popsicles and we sit here and I uh, can foresee us using this a lot in the coming months. Oh, you know what? Let's just take a look out here in this lawn. We'll cruise around this way just because, now just ignore all the stuff here. I did no cleaning up before this tour. Um, we haven't done anything out here yet, but this is still on the docket for this year. So just as an update, still have patches of dead grass. We'll be coming in, removing all the grass. We're gonna take it all out, everything. We're gonna put in a flagstone pathway here. This will all be flower bed that we can you know, do up. And then we'll have a thick flower bed over on this side as well, and then a little bit of grass. So we're gonna be reducing the grass by what, about two thirds probably in this area. And I think it's gonna be good. It'll be really nice to help frame in the Hartley. Right now it's kind of like this awkward space where, you know, we don't have sprinklers that are working properly to 
to cover all the grass and we knew that that would happen, but I'm excited to get that done because we used this pathway so much this last winter. Uh, so it'll be nice to have something that's a little more solid underfoot than soggy grass. Okay, we did have a container plug up right here. So this is one of the examples of one that we need to drill out. We need to, drill. there's one drain hole. We need to drill out probably three more in this container, but it did look like this. <laughs> so it's a little bit sad that it happened. It just got away from us. We thought it was dry and we, you know, could have just stuck our finger in there to test it out. But instead we just thought, oh, it got missed. So we watered it more. And then the next day realized like, oh, there's a little pond inside that container. It's not dry, it's rotting. Um, so anyway, we had to clean those out, but this is the Super Tunia Bermuda Beach Improved. And I have to say that in the beginning, I was a little bit bummed that the color of the improved version was so much brighter than the old version but I think it's beautiful. I don't know, yeah, I don't know if it just had to grow on me, but I think the mixture of the older blooms, like this right here, and the newer blooms, which are that brighter color, it just kind of um, having this, what's the word? Mellows it a little bit, mellows the color. Love using the Gara as a centerpiece, that stratosphere white, it really has this ethereal, magical quality to it. The super bells that are in here, don't put them with super tunians. <laughs> I, you know, the growth habit of the old Bermuda Beach would have probably allowed the Super Bells to coexist happily, but not with this new one. The growth is way more vigorous. All right, so progress report on the sprinters. <laughs> Remember when I cut these back hard? That was a scary thing. And they are rebound, rebounding. And I, I don't know, I was almost at a point where after we cut them back, they looked so bad for a couple of weeks. And I thought, let's just pull them. Let's just pull them and put a different variety in here. <sighs> but you know, you see them do this and rebound. We'll probably give them another shot because we're not out anything just to wait, see what they do. But if we still deal with flopping issues with this variety, we're gonna remove all of them and put in winter gems most likely. But denim and lace Russian sage looking awesome. This is its peak time of year, you guys. I mean, it looks good as it's growing and filling in through the season, like it's a very clean looking plant, um, but I really enjoy this one. It's the perfect height for this urn, honestly. I think it's just great. A uh, surefire rose begonias. Now, we are learning a little bit about this. First of all, these in the front do not get as much water as these in the back because the sprinklers right are back here so they get a lot more overspray and just a lot more concentrated water so they look a lot better toward the back side they also get more shade back here um, so we're seeing more robust growth back here than we than we are up front it's just interesting to see from you know year to year how this space changes and really from year to year the performance of plants based on where you put them we had surefire rose underneath the red point maples on the west side last year and they did phenomenally well and they looked like this but maybe even double size ish uh so yeah it's just really interesting i think that these are doing better though than how do we put in a full sun lover like a super tunia or a super bina because this side just gets so much more shade than that side so to marry this whole area and make it look cohesive you've got to have something that can handle both. And we're just finding that Surefire Rose, if this got more water up here, they might do our full sun. Otherwise, it might be a, a hard one for us to get away with like full blazing afternoon sun. Uh, let's head out to these containers. I just updated these in, I think it was this morning's video. We cut these back hard just, just over two weeks ago. The plants were starting to look kind of stringy and sad um, and they were looking just, I did find some aphids in a few of them. They just looked bad. And I thought, you know, we've got almost three months left of our growing season. And if I don't trim them, they're gonna continue to look bad and look leggy. So let's get them cut back and see what happens. So I took off so much of the plant canopy. I trimmed the sweet potato vine and they have flushed out so beautifully. Uh, and when I came out to update you guys, I went ahead and cut these again because they were all the way down on the ground. Now I prefer to use the Sweetheart Lime Sweet Potato Vine because it's got a more compact growth habit, but we had our, uh, a hard time getting our hands on it this year. So I had to use, I think this is a uh, light green, Sweetheart Light Green. Amazing color, amazing growth habit, but it just, it's so much more aggressive. Typically, I don't cut these containers back at all, ever. And I usually don't have to cut back the potato vine, but this year, it just was necessary. Every year's a little bit different. Can you see the flocks in there? We've got the, I can't remember the names, backlight, 
opalescent, no, not backlight, that's the white one. There's the opalescent and violet. They're just starting to fade out, but they have been so beautiful uh, and just vibrant and the perfect height behind those boxwoods. We did have to take out a little evergreen in here, so I haven't had a chance to come in and uh, like revamp this area, but that's on the docket. And I think Paul was planning on coming in here with some mulch or some compost here soon. Uh, so that will tidy it up quite a lot. This area has been so fun. So we've got the Super Chita Mini Vista Yellows kind of hugging this pathway. And we've got Helichrysum's Icicles. Those were just leftovers that I um, wintered over in the greenhouse. We've got the Stormburst Superbina and then a ton of the pink Senorita Zinnias that I started from seed in the greenhouse. And Benjamin and I came out here and planted just these little tiny plants not that long ago. And they're starting to put on some color. It's really fun. I can't wait to see them once they've gotten quite a bit more thick. It's gonna be just this huge drift and solid block of zinnias right here. Um, these, I the name always evades me. It's some kind of a sunflower, like a Maximilian, is that right? They bloom super duper late. In fact, I can kind of see, no, I thought I could see where buds were forming, but I don't even see buds yet. They get super tall, tons of yellow flowers. It's just really pretty. This is, these were here when we moved in. Um, and they used to be right behind a fence when the fence was here. Uh, Russian sage, this is a traditional variety right here. Uh, and then all of the shade stuff that we've planted in here is looking pretty good. I mean, given the fact that it's been so dang hot, I'm surprised the hostas aren't more burned. So the oak leaf hydrangeas, which had like the most minuscule root system ever. I took them out. Do you ever take anything out of the can and the soil just falls off and you've got like little roots just hanging there? That's what these were like. They were not rooted in very well at all. And I thought, oh, for crying out loud, these are not going to survive. But they are so pretty. I cannot remember the name of these. But look at that. They're starting to put on a little bit of that tinge of pink for late fall or for fall, not late fall. Not there yet. And then over on this side, we have more hostas and the Japanese maple, some yews. I'm waiting on, I want to put in another Gatsby gal right here. So another one of these type of hydrangeas right here, which we did have one and it did not make it. So we'll tuck that in. Hopefully this one re rebounds from whatever's going on with it, but it'd be real pretty to have a bank of those hydrangeas right here. Okay, I think we're just gonna cruise right over here to the west side. Okay, over here on the west side, I wanted to start in this area because it's looking so pretty. And this whole view right here, I just enjoy it so much. You know, we've got a lot of different light requirements in this area. It starts off shade, moves to sun, goes back to shade. Uh, and usually by this time, it, well, first off, before we go down that way, we've got beautiful coleus. Let's look at this. Got to see it from this view. We've got Elbrido, that's the two right in there. We've got um, Cherry Brandy, we've got Golden Dreams, we've got the Cherry Drop over there, we've got the Newly Noir right here, and we've got Lime Time, and we've got a Rogue Rose that's super chlorotic and needs to be pulled out. <laughs> Look at that, oh my word. Anyway, kind of fun to see them all together in this area, and they look so great. They get a slice of sun late in the evening, like that hot, super hot sun and they're doing it. So I'm thankful for that. The west side on this side, I just showed it in a video where I cut back the urns. Um, not a tremendous amount different in this space other than plants that need some attention. Uh, Surefire white begonias have filled in a bit, far less, um, not aggressive. Uh, yeah, aggressive maybe. <laughs> the Surefire rose begonias are not aggressive, but they grow faster, they're more robust. These are just a little bit more of a dainty plant. They did start off super little. I think that maybe we got the plants right after the plugs had been planted up in the containers because they were barely rooted. They were just pretty small. Um, so I'm thankful that they have filled in and kind of covered up the soil in this area. And I like the white blooms here. It's, it's very pretty. Uh, over here though, let's pop back here. I want to show you the hostas because usually by this time of year, we've groomed up the hostas to almost nothing because the edges burn and they get torn by our wind, especially these. These are the seducer hostas. And it's funny because you can tell this one is protected by the juniper tree. These four are not, and those always get beat up more than this one. This one always has more leaves. It's always a little bit bigger. Uh, it's just kind of interesting to me. But we've got an Empress Wu here, which, you know, there's a little burning. This is what happens here. 
little burning, but not bad. Usually this one gets sun in the afternoon on this side. So I thought I had it scooted over far enough, but not quite. So I do really need to groom that off, but I am just like amazed at the health of the hostas this year. I attribute that to our long spring, cool weather, lots of rain this year. Um, over here, it's kind of funny how some areas kind of remain neglected for an entire season. We have a bunch of dead lavender in here, which are my dead plants. Haven't even attempted to tackle taking those out or doing anything different. There's a lot of other things going on. I've really enjoyed this container with the Super Tunia Latte. It's looking like it could maybe use a little cutback as well, but I love the white uh, tones in that container. Okay. The fountain is not running because the electric keeps tripping. We don't know what's going on there. So we've got to figure that out as well. I have really enjoyed this elderberry being trimmed up a little bit, but boy, just looking at these flower beds, I'm just kind of excited to get my hands on my clippers and get some time to come out here and just go through them. The boscobels need to be deadheaded, but you can see that they have reflushed quite a lot. And there's some really pretty color in there. And these containers have really come into their own. So I used some strawberry punch super bells, which looked so sad after I planted them. And then uh, the agaratum, I started from seed and those were really small when I put them in and there's some white geraniums, which were kind of unnecessary actually in the end, but the agaratum is really uh, filled in a lot and the super bells are doing great. So I'm super, super happy with that. Okay, this spot right here will blind you. We've got super tunia vista jazzberry carpet right here. My goodness. This plant loves this spot. You can see how well it, it fills in and grows and how much color. It's like this electric pink. We've also got some gomfrina in there. There's some play in the blue salvia. I can see bumblebees in there. How, how fun. Uh, there's also some diamond frost euphorbia, which honestly, I don't think I would use that in a full sun spot in a flower bed maybe because it looks a little dry to me. Does it look like that to you, Erin? like a little bright pop. There's more of it right here. I love it though, up next to this Angelonia. That's a lavender colored. I think it's, is it lilac or I can't remember the name of it, but I really think that's a pretty plant. Okay, the hay racks over here. There's a couple cars in the way, but uh, you can see that they're doing really well. Every single one of them. Oh, we're gonna have to go around, but you, we'll probably do more of a, uh, formal update video here soon. So we're, when we go through each one of them, just wanted to give you an overview today. Yeah, look at all the color. Superbina is kind of cycling out, but the plants look good. Sagavola looks good. And one that I'm really surprised about, come down here, check this out. Wow, vintage coral looks amazing. James Britannia, this one surprises me. It is so thick and lush and full of color. I really like it. And then this redstone, super bells, double, it's red and yellow, but it's got kind of a softer appearance because of some of the older blooms have a little bit more of a like corally appearance to them instead of being red. I think it's just really pretty. And this is my favorite use of Super Tunia Mini Vista Midnight thus far. It's such a dark color, but when you mass it together like this, it's really quite pretty and it's spilling, which uh, you know we've experienced before, it's growth habits kind of a flat mat. So I'm really happy about that. The urns by our dumpster, the dumpster urns, I hate to call these gorgeous urns the dumpster urns, but it's, it is what they're near, nearby. We've got the blue Mohawk Junkus in the center, the Hoopla Orchid, Super Tunia, the Champagne, right? Super Bina, I think Champagne. And then there was one of the Sweet Sangria Super Tunia. They've done pretty well, but we're kind of in between on these Super Binas. They're kind of doing this, their old blooms look like they're melting. So I feel like if I came along and did a little cleanup on them, it would look really pretty, but give them a little time and they'll bounce back and there'll be a lot more blooms. This corner I really enjoy. And you know, this, this garden is so funny out here because it's like, where do I have a spot where I can fit the shrub, where it can grow to its full size? Well, like you just kind of plunk things around and hope in the end that things come together. And so we've got a lot of little pockets where we've got lots of plants and then there's like, Basic, you know, I don't know, there's no plan out here, you guys, zero. 
zero plan. We're just doing things as it feels right. <laughs> and sometimes you hit it and sometimes I think, oh, nope, I need to move these things around. This is not good. But I really enjoy this. We've got some ruby chip uh, buddleias back here looking great. Serendipity alliums. I just had three left over from another project and that's a lot of what we do is just pop leftovers out here. Um, lilac crush, right? I think it's lilac crush um, hibiscus looking great. Of course, uh, Russian sage, the limelight prime hydrangeas. I think we should go to the grass opening over here and then we'll walk through. A lot of perennials in this space here, looking really great. The denim and lace Russian sage. And then these are the firelight tidbit hydrangeas, which you guys, they get on a normal, a normal day, they get full sun all day long, like no protection, full sun. And they really are doing so well. Look at this one. That one especially, like it's really broadened out and there's so much color so so pretty you can see the butter pecan echinacea right there looking great all the echinaceas for the most part are looking really good right now um, we have some cat's meow nepeda that we did not cut back i meant to get out here earlier but you can see that the old growth is kind of lower and this is the new growth so i don't really want to cut it back at this point i mean maybe i should it would have time to recover but there's still a lot of color and the bees i don't know if you can see all the bees on it but Honeybees just are attracted to this plant, so we'll probably just leave it alone, let it do its thing. Uh, there's a couple of things that I've learned. This is a Drops of Jupiter oregano. Now, I have these planted along the west side, and they get a lot less sun, and they are about half this size. Um, and they stay very much more mounded, less like, oh. And so this one, I'm going to be moving. It's way too big to be at the edge of a border. I kind of expected it to grow like those, because that's my only experience with them. Uh, and it just apparently loves its spot a lot and it's just a little too big so we will move this somewhere else i do like the color of the blooms but it needs to be cut back divided and then that will help with the flopping pro problem as well uh, serendipity alliums here some other really beautiful things some uh, coral jade sedum and that's a firelight hydrangea we are going to swing this way we'll look at this flower bed and then i want to go down the rock path um, i'm planning on coming out here and getting these deadheaded today. This is the Rise Up Amberness Rose. We've got a Procumbens Blue Spruce, which has put on some growth. I'm excited about that. Um, Back in Black Sedum, the Niagara Falls Panicum. I think it's just such a beautiful grass. This one made me stop in my tracks yesterday. It was actually that one. They're two of the same in the same flower bed. And I was just like, all of a sudden noticed how glorious it looked. Now we're going to get some sun. Okay, let's go this direction just to see a few of the things along the stone pathway. You guys know that we haven't, well, clearly haven't done a ton of planting here. Um, now that we have the rock path in and we put in this little side shoot to the berries, I was gonna do a fourth uh, lilac right here. So I had kind of the swing of lilacs, but now the spacing's weird. So this fall, I think I'm gonna lift these two up and move them over just a little bit so they can span this area equally. That's the plan. And I wanted to show you this Chitalpa that we recently planted. There are three of them here. There's one here, there, and there. It's a mix between a desert willow and a catalpa. And, uh, you know, by looking at these blooms, I would think it wouldn't survive our full sun. I planted these out here when it was 100 degrees. And then they proceeded to go through all of our 100 plus degree days. And they have not skipped a beat. Not, they have not wilted one time. And they just keep producing blooms that are super fragrant. I love these and I'm so ex excited to see what they do. Paul and I came out yesterday and got that Serbian spruce planted right in that area. Nice to have an evergreen interest right there. And the raspberries, we've been picking on those. Um, they're really loading up. We're gonna have a huge harvest here very soon. And then the cut flower garden out here, first of all, these containers. I planted one of the, it's upside, uh, is it upside kiwi or upside lime or something like that, potato vine? It's a climber type potato vine so one and it was real little and they're kind of monsters so be prepared for that it's kind of like planting a thimbergia or a black eyed season vine uh, in a container like this like it will smother everything else out I did not expect that though it was such a puny little thing when I planted it and it's pretty it's a pretty color and you could keep up on it you know and trim and things like that but 
I, I don't like that kind of maintenance really on the regular. I want to just plant things, learn from it, and then I can plant them on their own by themselves uh, so that we can still see more of the color. There's still some color popping out though and real pretty. Uh, you know, I came out here yesterday, deadheaded all the roses. They're doing great. And I also gave an update on how I feel the predatory mites are doing in this space to handle our thrip issue. And I do think that they are working. It's just still under two weeks since we released those. And um, I can see that the thrip population has diminished quite a lot. Like, I want to say at least half at this point. I mean, maybe that's wishful thinking. Uh, I can still find them in some places. The snapdragons were the worst, and I think that's because the flowers are kind of closed, you know, and you kind of have to open them, and, and then I would find thrips on the inside. Now I'm opening some of the flowers and there's zero thrips, or I'll open one and I'll see like five thrips instead of 20. <laughs> so I'm noticing far less, far less in the roses. And you know, that probably means this year we're gonna forfeit giving away many flowers because I don't wanna give away buggy flowers, but it's such a good learning experience. And if we can figure out how to combat insects using other insects instead of sprays, I think going forward, that's gonna mean so much more to me in this space than you know being able to give away a ton of flowers this year. And honestly, I love looking out and just enjoying the flowers, just enjoying them being here and not stressing about it. Uh, and you know, we don't employ any kind of staking method anywhere except for the dahlias and the sweet peas. Uh, so things are just kind of like this tumbly magical. I don't know. I love it. Uh, we have pulled some things, some early things. See what that drip tape does? Look at that. Sorry, come along and give it one of these. That looks better. <laughs> it does that in the sun. Like uh, when water goes in and out of it and then it gets really cool at night and it kind of constricts. Is that right? And then it gets warm during the day and it gets all willy nilly. But um, things are doing great. Lysianthus, you see that? Look at those beautiful flowers in there. Oh, they're so pretty. I love that pure white. This green is beautiful. The straw flowers and the gomfrina are awesome. And then we gotta run over here and look at the uh, Rudbeckia. The Rudbeckia is just phenomenal this year. I and mean, look at this row. Oh, it's so pretty. Cherry brandy. We've got some random variety that's in with my cherry brandy that I love. What is that? What variety is that? I'm gonna try to save seed off that even though it's nearby a ton of other varieties because if I could get some to come back that are true to that and I could save seed, I'm gonna do it. That's so pretty. We've got like the caramel mixed here. We've got Sahara. Look at that, look at how pretty that is. There's just so many beautiful varieties. And this one down here catches my eye every time. Every time I'm driving by, I just see this really fun kind of wild looking one and those are the Gloriosa double so some of them are double and some of them are not look at all those pollinators you guys this is what happens when you don't spray I mean they're just loaded there's just pollinators everywhere status is looking amazing and the zinnias that we started from seed late in the season we're gonna have a really beautiful late crop of those head back this way. And dahlias overall, so I, I explained this in the video yesterday when I came out and did the roses, but I think thrips uh, winter over in garden debris. And because we had a huge amount of garden debris over the dahlia tubers to try to overwinter them, I'm thinking that we made our problem like amplified because we had so much debris for them to, to winter in. I think we're not gonna do that this year. I wanna see if that helps reduce some of the population as well. And then we'll go after them early with the beneficials next year as well. So yeah, a little underwhelming in the Dahlia department, still tons of beautiful flowers, but I'm not noticing as much robust growth as I do when I plant the tubers fresh. Uh, it's just been a weird year for them. And I love this. This is like the alley of zinnias right here. I mean, if you come back this way, Look over the zinnias into the dahlia patch area. Isn't that just so pretty? Water just turned on in there, I can hear it. Look at how beautiful that is. Boy, it just goes to show like the right angle, the dahlia patch looks amazing <laughs> from this angle. But it's not always the case. I think every flower bed has its good angle. Kind of like how you feel about yourself, like your good side, <laughs> your bad side. Um, our perennial section is going things are doing well. Um, you know, we've got a lot of annuals in here as well, just because, you know, we had the space to do it at the time and I didn't have perennials to fill the whole thing. A couple of really beautiful ones. We've got the yarrow here. 
This is the Summer Pastels blend. And I think that color mix is so pretty. And then we've got the Eryngium. Look at this. Look at, do you see, can you see that? Can you see all those things flying around? Uh, look at this though. Oh, the Eryngium is awesome. And the pollinators just absolutely love it. The color's awesome. And they maintain this color when they're dried. Look at this. Oh, just so proud of the pollinators this year. They're just so awesome. And you know what? Our star, there's a huge grasshopper. I just saw it. It went in here. Look at this. Strawberries are still rocking. These are seascapes right here. From about here on to the end of the row, those are all June bearing, which they're honey eye and all stars. Highly recommend those two varieties. And then we've got seascapes, which are, whoops, some of the most productive strawberries ever. These are first year plants right here because I had a little section of strawberries die out and I can't remember what variety died. So I put seascapes back in here and then we've got quinaults and then we've got more seascapes down there. But yeah, just absolutely amazing. I need to get out here and pick them because there are a ton that are ready. Just amazing shape, amazing size, really good flavor. Foxglove, you can see that they are starting to peter out a little bit, but I'm waiting for them to set their seed. I want them to sprinkle their own seed around in this area because they are biennial plants. So I'll want new ones to kind of establish themselves. We have an amaranth from last year and I have harvested all of the wheat. So I need to come through and do a cleanup, uh, but I hand harvested the back half of that row uh, and we're gonna be doing some wheat cleaning here fairly, fairly soon. Ooh, look at this over here. Oh. Oh. Oh, yum. These are Santa Rosa plums. Having an orchard is so awesome. I love it so much. Apples are looking pretty good. We've got Fuji's right here. I haven't sprayed these very diligently, like for to keep worms out. I sprayed them one time. That's it. So our honey crisp apples on the other side are actually bigger than this, but I do notice a few more that have uh, worm holes in them. But I think we'll get a decent harvest. It's looking pretty out here, but I'm really feeling that, um, that motivation to get out here and keep filling in these fly reds, especially on this side. If you pop out over onto the driveway side, I have worked so little. I mean, look at all the space here. <laughs> I really worked on the interior. So when you're looking at this flower bed from the driveway side, you're kind of seeing the back of the flower bed at this point. So I really want to start working on, we've got some real fun ideas for this area that we might implement maybe yet this year. So we'll see what happens, but things are doing great. We have a little bit of, of cutback we need to do. You know, Veronica is spent still a lot of pollinators around it, but I need to come shear that back. Uh, but we've got hardy geraniums and sedum. These are the puffer fish hydrangeas right here that are really looking good. We planted those last year. Some Agastache. This is the Supertunia Saffron Finch. And I think it's so beautiful. I love that color of yellow. That's, that's the color of yellow to plant right there. That very soft. And perennial geraniums. We've got some white swan uh, echinacea. I mean, we could name all of the plants out here, but that would take us forever. <laughs> yeah, see, just little pockets that are done here and there. Um, you know, I planted the Royal Raspberry Agastache twice in this spot and it's died out both times. So I've got to figure out something else, probably something purple I can put in that area. Uh, we've got more of the drops of Jupiter Oregano. So same business out here. We're going to come back and shear that back. It gets a lot of sun out here. Um, the Totem Pole Panicums. These are pretty amazing grass. I mean, we cut them back to the ground every year. They shoot up like this. They've got that really cool blue color. I just think they're such a fun vertical, like strong vertical accent. And we've got several trees that are doing great in this area. You know, the birch tree we planted last year, I think that that's probably double, don't you think? It really looks like a lot thicker. Uh, the red bud here is doing well. We've got some day lilies blooming. But the real stunner out here, there's a couple. There's first of all the Budlia. This is the Miss Ruby right there. Looking so pretty. And then we've got the perennial geraniums. I think this is Johnson's Blue. Possibly more of the totem pole panicum. But then we've got the evening rose hibiscus. 
Super Venus Sparkling Amethyst, and the Limelight Prime Hydrangeas. Couldn't remember the name of that one. Uh, but all of the trees back in here too, it's really fun to see all the different layers here. You know, the Tickle Creek White Bark Birch is looking so pretty and just so like, that would look pretty around the pond, I think. I think that structure. And then we've got a Red Fox Katsura tree back in there, Black Lace Elderberry putting on some major size. Uh, day lilies, I need to come through and deadhead these. Oh, look at that hollyhock. Come on, we gotta come back here. This is one of the ones we started from seed, the chestnut brown variety. Look at how pretty. Oh my goodness. Boy, that one's really shot up compared to the rest of these. There's a couple of them that are way taller. Interesting. These could stand some cleanup around the bottoms too. Okay, over here. The uh, tiger eye sumac. <laughs> so I, you know, all along I've been saying it's not invasive. It's not as invasive as the older varieties. Well, I think that's probably true in, in a sense. I think the other varieties, the older varieties do spread a little quicker. This one took three years to get to this point where it's starting to spread itself around. Uh, but it's so thick and gorgeous right here <laughs> um, that I want to wait till at least we get to see the fall show that it puts on. This gets, I mean, it's like balls of fire out here. It's so pretty and vibrant. So I want to see the show, let the leaves fall off. Then I'll be able to easily tell where I want to leave, you know, some of the structure and where I want to pull some of it out. Um, so like clearly right here, I'm not going to want to keep this in here. I wonder, yeah, well, I'll come in here and dig it out. <laughs> Hold on. There we go. Um, yeah, so we'll want to, you know, free some of these perennials that are being a little bit pushed over by the sumac. This is the Blonde Ambition, blue grandma grass same variety that we have up at the top of the pond and so these are more geez the dead branch in there these are more established they've been in here for a couple of seasons and I just enjoy them so much so pretty okay oh see I need to cut back some betony in here super junior persimmons looking great also back in here we have a uh, sweet shrub the Aphrodite oh it smells like grapes I am amazed by this plant. I thought for sure it would be a type that wouldn't do well for us here. And it's put on so much growth and the leaves are so interesting and huge. And I love that kind of glossy deep green. Really happy with that. And these are some more of the hollyhocks we started from seed. <laughs> Those probably need to be staked. They're a little bit getting out of control. Over here, we've got some Miss Violet Budlia, which every single one of these died all the way back to the ground this year. Uh, and I actually thought that we had lost a couple of them, but they all ended up coming back. Um, some a little bit weaker than others, but really pretty color. We'll see what happens this winter. But I love having this big bank of purple right here. And then another interesting thing, a couple of them. This is the Fall in Love Sweet Sweetly Anemone, which Japanese anemones usually, especially in our area, need to have a little protection in the afternoon sun. And so I did this as an experiment because this variety is supposed to be able to handle more sun. I planted them last year. They did fry a little bit. Uh, and then this year they look super healthy. And I thought, well, maybe they just need to root in a bit and then they can handle the sun. Uh, and so far so good. And they're about ready to start putting on some blooms. And then the other interesting thing over here is that super bells typically are, are ones that you don't want to plant in the ground. And I am experiencing that with most of the other varieties that I planted in the ground this year, but this one, this is the double twilight and it's forming the most beautiful carpet. Like I would do this again. These even got forgotten. Uh, I thought I had asked Paul to run drip to them and I didn't. So of course he didn't run drip to them because <laughs> I didn't ask him to. And then I came out one day and they were just all shriveled up and I thought, oh, we were, you know, we forgot, we've got it all figured out and we got drip run to them, but they rebounded from that and they look so gorgeous. And then over here, kind of our last thing, cause there's really not, you know, there's some trees and things looking good, but I haven't done any perennial, a lot of perennials in this area. We've got the Twizzle Coral Penstemon that I started from seed. And I think that the color of that one is just so pretty. And then we've got the Hoopla Orchid Supertunia, which is a new one for next year. So we've got these in the hay racks, but then also I used the rest of the flat to put out here just to see how, like the difference, to see if they liked container over ground or what they would look like. And I think they're just real nice, really pretty. And you guys, that's pretty much it for this tour. I mean, the only other area we didn't hit is the high tunnel area, but I just showed you through that a couple of days ago. Um, so we will look at that later on and everything's doing real well. 
And overall, everything for this time of year is looking pretty dang good. We've got a lot of little maintenance things to do, but I'll bring you along for that. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this whole video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.